Have you heard about the faith in the time of trouble? In this lesson, we will learn about facing great danger. Happy Sunday. Are you missing your Sunday school? Would you like to be a part of our Sunday school? Then subscribe. Hi, I'm Regina Dean Reed and I teach Sunday school at Antioch Missionary Baptist Church in Maven, Mississippi. Now, let's get into this lesson. And today's lesson is Faith in Times of Trouble. Devotional reading is Matthew the 8th chapter, verses 18 through 27. Background scripture is Daniel the 6th chapter, verses 1 through 28. And our key verse is Daniel the 6th chapter, verse 22. Today's date is February 18, 2024. Let's start with a prayer. Living God. You care for your people and have promised to be with us no matter what we face. Give us the courage to face adversity and maintain faithfulness to you. Help us behave with mercy to those who have sought to harm us. Show us how to follow you in a manner that brings other people closer to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Lesson aims. 1. Summarize Daniel's personal conviction of faith in God in the midst of injustice. Two, compare and contrast Daniel's faith expression with those of three colleagues in last week's lesson. Three, com commit to bearing faithful witness to God in facing a personal lion's den. Lesson introduction. Would you feel comfortable correcting someone who was praying in a way that seemed wrong? My guess is that a majority of Christians would instantly respond, no. Prayer is personal between God and the person praying. Who am I to criticize or correct the prayer of another? Alongside that reaction, however, we can place scripture passages that do direct the form, content, and motives of our prayers. Personal motives that stand behind prayer practices vary widely. Prayer has been used as a tool to gain political clout, as a public act of remembrance, or a habitual nicety before meals. These kinds of prayers are often little more than exercises in ceremonial theisms. Such window dressing prayer may achieve the desired earthly outcome as it motivates people to act. The danger of such prayer is that it treats God as a kind of cosmic vending machine. Insert the right words, get the right publicity, and receive the vended outcome. We know better in that regard, but do we do better? A first step in doing better with regard to prayer is to remind ourselves that God is already aware of our needs. This is found in Matthew, the sixth chapter, verse 32. We can't tell him something he doesn't already know. The foundational part of prayer, rather, is that it orients us to God's faithfulness and ability to provide and protect. In prayer, we address the God who loved us enough to give his son for our sins, and he wants to hear from us. Lesson context. The context for this lesson is generally the same as lesson 11. However, Several years have passed between the events of Daniel 3 and today's scripture. The most notable is that a new empire replaced the Babylonians, the Persians, after a hand wrote a message of warning to Babylonian King Belshazzar, the king died. Scripture does not reveal exactly how he died, only that it occurred and that the 62-year-old Darius, the Median, son of Ahasuerus, replaced him in power. Outside of scripture, there is no mention of this particular Darius, and it was a common name. Therefore, identifying him is nearly impossible. He is likely not the same as the Persian king Darius I, also known as Darius the Great. One proposal identifies our Darius as a regional governor of Babylon, 
installed under the oversight of Cyrus. Another proposal hypothesizes that Darius was another name for a Persian commander who led the Persian army into Babylon. Today's study has as its backdrop the appointment of 120 princes under the oversight of three presidents. These included Dave, Daniel, Daniel's reputation with previous kings influenced Darius, the king, preferred Daniel over all the other princes and presidents and sought to set Daniel over the whole realm. However, the king's high regard for Daniel led Daniel's peers to scheme against him. Although they tried to find fault in Daniel, they could not find grounds to file charges against him. Instead, they developed a trap that Darius could not overturn. Their plan encouraged Darius to establish a statue that whoever should pray to any deity or man except the king for 30 days would be thrown into the den of lions. Prayer for a monarch was standard in the ancient Near East, but prayer to a monarch was exceptional. Further, the officials maneuvered the king to issue the decree according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altered not. There would be little Darius could do to prevent the enforcement of the statue after it, he signed the writing and the decree. Lesson scriptures. Daniel, the sixth chapter, verses 10 through 11, then verse 14, verse 16, verse 19 through 23, and then verse 26 through 27. Verse 10. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into the house and had his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Daniel, as a high ranking official in the king's court, enjoyed great privilege and wealth. In ancient Babylonian houses, had flat roofs that were used as extra rooms or patios. And these rooftop areas often had walls and windows for privacy. However, because of Daniel's position, his prayers could not be kept secret, even if he wanted to. While the law of Moses encouraged people to remember God's command daily, it did not specifically require kneeling and praying three times a day. During the dedication of the Solomon's temple, the Lord instructed people to pray toward Jerusalem and the temple during times of distress. Kneeling and bowing are both mentioned in Psalms 95 and 6 as postures of worship. Verse 11. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Now these individuals were the ones who influenced Darius to issue the decree that only the king should be worshipped. Refer to the lesson context. Daniel's open windows made it easy to catch him in the act. This is found in Daniel, the sixth chapter and verse 10. We just, we just read. He continued his habit of praying and making supplication without considering the danger it presented. Verse 14. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself. It set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. In Daniel, the sixth chapter, verses 12 through 13, the king's officials told Darius about his decree and how Daniel disobeyed it. Darius realized he had been tricked by his officials who used deception to manipulate him. Instead of being mad at Daniel, the king was upset with himself for not seeing through the officials' plans. He tried to find a way to save Daniel from the consequences of breaking this decree but it seemed impossible because of the laws of the Medes and the Persians mentioned in this story and in Esther. Simply canceling the decree was not an option, making it difficult for the king to help Daniel. Verse 16. Then the king commanded that they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God whom thou serveth continually, he will deliver thee. 
The king was pressured by officials and couldn't change the decree that started everything. If he didn't approve the punishment, he would show disrespect for his culture and law. So he ordered that Daniel should face the consequences already decided. The lion hunt of Ashurbanipal, an ancient Assyrian relief from the 7th century BC, shows how important lion hunting was for Assyrian royals. Lions were kept in a den until they were released for the king to hunt and kill. Darius probably believed in many gods, so if he believed in Daniel's God, it wasn't as the only true God. It's unclear if Darius' words were sarcastic or a real prayer, but it's likely a prayer. Darius' reaction can be compared to Nebuchadnezzar's doubt when the three Jewish men refused to bow before a golden image. Only after seeing God save them from Nebuchadnezzar, acknowledge that there is no other God who can deliver like this. Darius still had faith that God could rescue Daniel even if there was no proof. Verse 19. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste to the den of the lions. The king's early rise the next morning showed how worried he was about Daniel. Darius couldn't sleep because he felt guilty about what happened to Daniel. The den was sealed with the king's and other officials' signets, so no one could rescue Daniel. The only way he could have survived with the lions was if God helped him. Verse 20, And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamented voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thou God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? The king was really worried about his trusted president, Daniel. He couldn't sleep or eat because of it. When he went to check on Daniel, he called out sadly, thinking the worst had happened, that the gods worshipped in Babylon were useless, unlike the true living God that Daniel believed in. Daniel's loyalty to God was clear, and everyone knew he was honest and reliable. He showed respect to both God and the king. Verse 21. Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. The king's advisors, subordinates, and even the queen all desired the king's well-being and longevity. And this was the first and only instance in the book where an Israelite greeted the king in this way. Despite Daniel's predicament being a result of the king's lack of understanding, he still showed respect and honor when addressing him. Verse 22. My God hath sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocency was found in me. And also before thee, O king, I have done no hurt. Daniel credited his survival to an angel sent by God who miraculously protected him from the lions. He also emphasized that he was innocent before God and the king because he followed God's law faithfully. Verse 23. Then was the king exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den. No manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God. The king went from feeling distressed to being joyful and happy when he saw God's deliverance in action. Daniel came out of the trial unharmed. Even though God saved Daniel, the Bible is clear that being faithful doesn't mean God has to save believers from dying from their faith. Some believers might face martyrdom. Examples are Luke, the 21st chapter, verse 16, Acts, the 7th chapter, verses 54 through 60, and Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verses 35 through 38. Those who stayed faithful to God during suffering have been promised eternal reward. Revelations, the second chapter, verse 10. Being faithful publicly can have a positive impact on the community. This change can happen individually, like how Darius became very happy for Daniel. It can also happen for a whole kingdom, as the following verses show. Verse 26. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God and steadfast forever. 
in his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. After Daniel's testimony and the miraculous rescue from the lions, King Darius took two important actions. First, he ordered that the officials who had accused Daniel face the same punishment they had planned for him. And second, he issued a decree to all people, nations, and, la and languages throughout his kingdom, emphasizing the wide-reaching impact of his command. This decree required everyone to respect and revere the God of Daniel. This demand for reverence could involve both fear of God's righteous and a respectful sense of worship. Coming from a non-believing kingdom, this directive carried significant weight. The king's degree said that Daniel's God is the only one who can give life and sustenance, and that his kingdom would never end, unlike earthly kingdoms. Verse 27, he delivered and rescued, and he worked signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. Who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? The decree highlighted God's miraculous deeds for his people, demonstrating his power through deliverance and rescue. Examples can be found in Exodus, the 20th chapter, verse 2, Psalms 34 and 4, Daniel's 3rd chapter, 26 through 29, and Jeremiah, 15th chapter, verse 11. God often performed these acts through signs and wonders, as seen in Exodus, 14 chapter, verses 13 through 30, and Jeremiah, 32nd chapter, verses 19 to 22. The deliverance of Daniel was another instance of God's intervention. And these are our questions. Leave them in the comments. One, how can having a regular daily prayer time help you connect with God in a positive way? Two, what's the difference between relying on God for protection and counting on human authority for help? And verse three, how can you support others while they wait for God's help? Conclusion Public confessions model something meaningful for today's Christians. It's easy to think of confession as an admission of sin, especially in a lewd, tell-all fashion. But that is not what the word means, even describing the text in Daniel. Here, the confession tells good news. The Lord chose to deliver Daniel which resulted in the king's surprising new edit. Daniel's confessing what happened with the lions and the king's reaction reoriented both the characters in the story and those reading about them to a larger truth. God's reign is both eternal and full of goodness. God's loyalty to his people reflect his divine character and the large-scale divine plan to redeem humanity. Daniel knew that eventually, and so did Darius. So do we. The church continues to confess its sins, but also God's redemption. Our life of celebration begins where Darius ended his learning experience. By repeatedly confessing God's goodness, we bring those outside, within, hearing distance of gospel itself. Daniel did so by his faithfulness in this story, and we do so too when we confess the gospel of our salvation. And our thought to remember, our faithfulness to God has personal and public implications. Sunday school teacher training is coming. It will be on a Thursday between seven and eight. I will post the exact date in the community tab real soon. And if you have enjoyed this lesson, give us a thumbs up, share this lesson, get into a Bible study group in person or online, Get your shots, stay six feet apart, love each other, pray for each other, and I will see you all next week.